247 Sports dropped a mock draft, and I am all for it. What is going on? It is Alex coming back at you with another video. And you guys know when there is a new mock draft, I am going to give you a live reaction to it. So feel free to live react with me down in the comment section below. Drop a like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. There's a lot more content coming, including the top 15 interior defensive linemen in the 2024 NFL draft. My board is below my face. It is being updated actually probably after this as I'm going to continue putting an interior defensive lineman into it. So very excited for that. And coming soon, we'll be having this available for you guys to look at the whole damn thing as a member. And then also we're going to have all 22 tape studies there on the discord. But if you guys miss it the first time, you guys can always become a member and then end up being able to enjoy it over there because I can post all 22 as a member's video since it doesn't have a public domain you know what i mean like it's not public so i'm not gonna get copyright striked it's because i love you guys and um also it makes it to where we can end up actually just enjoying and watching the all 22 without having to you know do rinse wash repeat again if you want to see it for free feel free to go to the discord where we have 700 people and um of course that's where you're going to be able to experience it live let's continue and let's check out the mock draft number one to the cardinals caleb williams I mean, again, if Cardinals, if I'm sitting there, I assume this is just going to be based on the um, betting odds, like based on that. But um, I mean, I assume you guys can read that if you want. But 99%, this is probably going to be the same de exact draft order as everything else. Uh, Caleb Williams probably would be the number one overall pick. If I'm Arizona and I can't trade out and I have number one and number two, it's just might as well. But um, if you could trade out, obviously, you're probably going to get like 25 drafts worth of picks for Caleb Williams because he is truly that special. Very hard to find a quarterback um, who can carry a roster probably the way that Caleb can at the next level. He's just such an unbelievable player, just has great instincts, makes a slip up here and there. But again, who doesn't? I mean, even Tom Brady would make a slip up here and there. So obviously not copying him to that to that level. But I do think he is on that Mahomesian level. I never got to see Patrick in college because I started this back in 2020. But uh, from all the quarterbacks I've ever seen, he is by far the best. So very excited to see him at the next level. Then you got Marvin Harrison also going to the Arizona Cardinals. So there you go. Uh, Marvin Harrison is the second best player in the class. So I fully support it. But, you know, just one of those guys who's super fluid. Only issues uh, primarily come down to the fluidity. Or actually, not. Hmm. Let me say, take that back. He's a very fluid athlete, comes to the top speed and he's not a great guy after the catch. He's not going to be like an Antoine Wells making you guys miss left, right and center. Then you got Brock Bowers to the Colts. Um, they love their tight ends, but I mean, you could put them in the slot to be fair. Brock Bowers is a very unique weapon on the field. As you can see below my face, I do not have Brock Bowers listed as a tight end. He is the only player I've ever given the term weapon to. And uh, that's because I think he can play anywhere. I personally would be looking at offensive linemen at this point, but I am not going to shame a team for going uh, Brock Bowers if they use him as a slot tight end because him paired up with all their other amazing tight ends. And then you have Alec Pierce and Michael Pittman Jr. That's a pretty stacked core. And then you give Anthony Richardson zero excuses. Uh, Drake May is next for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You know, I think that's, if he's there, that's a smart move. Personally, I don't have Drake as my number two quarterback, but I do think he's somebody who will ascend into that position. He's just based on his year one play, not necessarily over the moon about him, but has those extremely high level reps. I just want that to be a little bit more consistent. Olu Fashanu is the first tackle taken to the Bears. Uh, if they don't want to end up going after Braxton Jones and keeping him long run, I don't think O-line is every bad idea. But I don't really know if Braxton Jones is, you know, worth moving off of. Uh, I don't think the Bears will be at number five. And people are mad at me because I have him at number nine on my board. But, you know, um, it's it's an interesting spot. We'll have to see why they're here. I personally look at the edge rushers because I think there's a pretty uh, thin top of the class. And then there's a significant drop off. Quinn Ewers is going to the commanders. You know, interesting player. Uh, I think Quinn needs to definitely increase his deep accuracy. It's down to probably his mechanics, why he can't hit those. Randomly, my guy just will like absolutely suck in terms of his deep accuracy. 
when it comes to short and medium, he does put it on the money. But the moment it's past 20 yards, this guy has a very big issue actually hitting the target. I do have a little bit of a concern for that. And when you have great dynamic weapons like Jahan Dotson, Terry McLaurin, I mean, hell, even Deami Brown, Curtis Samuel, I don't want to limit them to within 20 yards. Like they have the dy- dynamic traits to be able to really make a difference deep. And I feel like that's a little bit limited with yours. Uh, Jared Verse is next to the Bears. So I did talk about going after an edge rusher for the Bears. They ended up doing that. So not going to complain too much. They got two of the top talents in the class. Cooley McKinstry goes to the Titans. Um, if the Titans are sitting here at eight, it's an interesting spot for sure. I'd go Joe Alt and have him paired up with Pierce Skaronski, then maybe have Andre Dillard move back to guard. Or, I mean, have Skaronski continue playing right tackle because I think he's going to to start out the year since Ferrer, I think, is suspended. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but, you know, that might be a route that I personally would do. I don't really think... Tennessee needs to target a corner this high, but I mean, Kool-Aid is one of the best DBs and there's always a need for it. So I wouldn't necessarily give it an awful grade because he's a great player at a position of high turnover and high need. Dallas Turner to the Patriots would be ridiculous. He is my top edge rusher in the class and he's going from, you know, Saban to Belichick. So uh, you already know that that arc is going to be absolutely ridiculous. Big fan of Dallas Turner, overall the most versatile athlete I have ever studied. Just somebody who I have comp to a better version of Von Miller and potentially a better version of Kayvon Thibodeau. Now we have Joe Milton going to the Rams. Yes. So y'all know, you guys can see it. Joe Milton is my number two quarterback in the class, taking a very big leap of faith on this based on very, very limited tape. But that limited tape from this past year, um, heavily focused on Clemson, Proved to me that this guy is worth a top 15 selection or a top 15 spot on my board. Being a top 10 selection, definitely warranted given that he's a quarterback. He can throw over 90 yards. He is very accurate. His only issues come down to sometimes mechanical errors. And a lot of these quarterbacks in this class have mechanical errors. He ends up throwing the ball too high. But you get to see that on actually quite a few of his throws, he will do the perfect mechanics of proper weight distribution um, the proper, you know, torque building that dissociation between the hips and the shoulders. And, you know, you get to see it definitely in practice. Amazing player, amazing player overall. I just hope he doesn't turn back into Michigan, Joe Milton, because that was not great. Um, now we have in this style, I really wish they did a little bit of a better job making it look pretty, but uh, Saints go Mecca Abuka. I like the idea of pairing him back up with Chris Olave. I always think that they can get better in that receiving core, even though I like uh, Rashid Shahid. Then you got Xavier Worthy, the Falcons. I don't really like that at all. I think the Falcons could definitely use one extra edge rusher because that's why they're patching it up with a bunch of old dudes. Um, You know, just I don't think Xavier Worthy is that good, to be honest with you. I hate to say it. Same thing with Michael Penix to the Raiders. I don't really feel like that solves anything. You want to go for a higher upside player, go Bo Nix, who's also older. If you want that day one impact, not necessarily going to be a huge fan of that. Not a fan of JT Tumalau either. (laughs) I'm just going to be honest. Um, I have him outside of my top 100. Just somebody who I feel is more of, um, he's more of like a one hit wonder than anything in that Penn State game. But a lot of people feast on that right side of the offensive line there for Penn State. I'm just not a fan of JT overall, even though I would trust D'Amico to have a potential chance of making him work. Just not over the moon about him. Cooper DeJean going to the Packers. Uh, They do end up needing safety help. Cooper is roughly in that area, and he is a big hitter with some good range. So I like the fact they listed him at safety for sure. Romo Dunze to the Giants, another player who I am not a fan of. I just don't like him that much. I'm sorry. I'm going to be honest with you guys until I'm proven wrong. I'm more than happy to be proven wrong by Rome because good football is more enjoyable for me than being correct. That's just the God honest truth. Amarius Mims going to the Broncos. Um, They ended up, well, he is listed as, well, (laughs) let's say it this way. Uh, Two out of three sites still list him as a right tackle. One out of three lists lists him as a left tackle. And then Georgia lists him as an offensive tackle. So God only knows. But, if he plays left this year, because it's up in the air, um, whether he's going to play left or right, then I think this is a fine, a very fine move. I think that if it ends up being a right tackle, this is stupid because they just paid McGlinchey. 
So we'll see what happens there. Jerzon Newton for the Ravens. I actually have that as one of my landing spots. Spoiler alert. And, um, you know, he's a good player. He's a really good player. I have, I'm have. i going to have him still probably in my top 10 to 15. Um, he's, he's a good technician. I have a lot of respect for the man and, you know, someone who I've been hyping up for a very long time. Michael Hall to the Lions. I don't like Michael Hall. Going to call it as it is. Don't think he's a very good defensive tackle. But I do think defensive interior is a position the Lions should be looking at. I'm not a huge fan of Broderick Martin. So I still think that need is there. Interior offensive line as well. A need for me. Uh, Braylon tries for the Chargers. I think I did that once. But the more I watch Tuli Tupelo too, I feel like that guy's going to be a superstar for him. And I'm going to just call it as it is. I don't feel like they need him. Even though Braylon Trice, number seven on my board, which I'll scroll down so you guys get a little bit more to see. Um just don't really think it's worth that pick because I don't feel like Braylon Trice would be getting the reps he needs in that situation, nor Thule. Then you got Jeremiah Trotter to the Dolphins. I don't feel like that's a bad move whatsoever. Dolphins can always use some extra help in that linebacking core. Chop going to Penn, uh, going to Penn State. He is right now, but going to the Seahawks. I feel like you're kind of just undermining Derek Hall at that point and Uchenna Nwosu. Uh, defensive interior. I mean, you've been getting it for a lot of teams, but this is one that definitely could use it. Linebacker as well. You saw Barrett Carter on the board, which you can always bring. And there's just a lot of guys. Tommy Eichenberg as well. Chop Robinson is way too raw to be taken in the first round to a team that doesn't need one. Like if you, I, I just don't get it personally. Uh, Joe Alt should never be down here this far, but you know, I'm, I tried to ignore that fact. Um, but him going to the Jacksonville Jaguars would be ridiculous. The fact that it doesn't say OT. I don't know if they did put OT for any of the other ones, but quite a concern. Uh, Mason Smith waiting for him to come back from his ACL tear, which he got from celebrating um, on like the first rep that he played. We'll see who he's going to be, but obviously his talent is ridiculous. Leatu Latu going to the Steelers makes absolutely no sense. We just paid Alex Highsmith. And Leatu also had to medically retire from a neck injury from Washington. Doesn't really make sense why he'd be going in the first. Then you got Javon Bullard going to the Leones. I don't feel like they need that remotely. They have Chauncey, who's going to be gone. But then they have Brian Branch. And then they also have Tracy Walker. And then they also have Kirby Joseph. This is one of the positions they don't need. So... Um, big miss right there because I think they could use a true boundary corner and there's some good ones left. JC Latham for the Cowboys. I'll, I'll never blame a team for going O-line, but I don't really feel like JC Latham's that good. You got Javion Cohen, another guy who I don't think is necessarily that great. Uh, I feel like the Cow or the Niners should be focusing on a right tackle actually, but this is not it. The Bills get my number six player in the draft, and he might end up being even higher than that. I fell in love with Johnny Wilson. I think he might be one of the best players I've ever studied. Just 6'7", 240, and he'll probably be running a low 4'5". He, he runs rounds better than Xavier Worthy, too. It's just someone who you just can't really fathom how good they are. And his only issue is drops, which his spectacular catches and contested catches are out of this world. He'll just randomly drop the most easy catches. Then you got Rocket Sanders to the Jets. It doesn't make sense. I don't think the NFL will ever draft running backs in the first round after if, if, if uh, we end up seeing Jameer Gibbs not pan out or um, if we don't see instant impacts from either of them because really cheap, there's not a very good return on investment there. And especially this class, like Jameer Gibbs, I get it because he could be Alvin Kamara-esque and then Bijan might be the best running back we've seen. There's nobody in this class that's like that. Maybe next year, like Quinshawn Junkins. We'll talk about it. And then we got Nazir Stackhouse, who I actually said should be a UDFA. So, um, yeah, he's clearly the worst defensive lineman that I was watching on Georgia. I just don't think he's really good at anything. So, I uh, don't really get that. Kamari Laster to the Eagles is a perfect pick because he's a raw corner who needs time to develop. And then you have him with Keeley there, who's also developing. Big fan of that. Malik Neighbors, I'm fine with it. The Chiefs, they like their guys who are good after the catch. Um, Antoine Wells, I think that'd be a fun one as well. But his limited top speed also worries me with Rashi Rice not necessarily being the speed burner. He definitely looks really fast in practice, so good for Raw. Um, but, you know, I'd go after Malik Neighbors personally. He's more of the deep threat athlete. So that's going to be the video. A little bit underwhelming. I'd expected a lot more from 2.7 Sports, but, or 2.4.7 Sports, but, 
yeah, you know, it's this time of year. It's okay to make mistakes. You know, it's just, we're here to have a good time. So let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.